Okay, we are live. Welcome to the small business, uh, let's call it a 45 minutes, not an hour. Uh, I am sitting with Sulet. My name is Nick Haralambus. Um, welcome to everybody. The numbers are ticking up quite nicely. Um, nearly at 200 people online right now. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is talking about small business, uh, the pandemic, the lockdown, the fallout from that, uh, and how we cope. Um, if you are live and watching us, say hello in the chat, and please feel free to ask questions in the chat down there. Stilet and I will get to the questions. Uh, what we're going to do is just introduce ourselves and then dive into some of the questions we've got. As I've said, my name is Nick Haralambus. I am an entrepreneur. I built my first business at 16. I published my first book a couple of years ago, um, and that's me. I, I built businesses. Um, Stilet, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Nick. Um, so, Sulet van Niekerk, I am a chartered accountant by profession, and um, these days I'm very careful when I say that out loud, because our profession is being questioned at the moment, and I'm hoping that will change in due course. Um, and what I do is I facilitate on the finance course for Stellenbosch Business School, and I'm absolutely passionate about finance and um, using it in your business, and um, I always say it's a language that you've got to learn and understand, and um, the numbers tell the story. So do you understand the story and the numbers? Absolutely. Um, I think uh, so many small businesses and entrepreneurs misunderstand the value of knowing their numbers, but we are going to get to that. Um, so let's kick off. Um, I want to know how the lockdown has been for you. You told me that you're a sole proprietor. Like, what are you going through? You're all safe and sound at home and what's going on in your world? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think the one thing about this lockdown is it has really affected everybody. You know, so whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you're a large business, everybody has been affected with it. And um, for me, initially, it was um, sheer shock to say, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? Um, and I saw a lot of my work being cancelled for April because we were just not ready. This is I do a face to face facilitation, engaging with people, that sort of thing. So it was that initial. <gasps> What now? And then starting to come to terms with it and starting to look at other alternatives, other avenues. How do we still use our skills? What can I still do? But not being able to engage with people, you know, in a classroom. Um, so moving more rapidly onto um, online platforms. I've been doing a very quick training on the, the different online platforms that's there to start using that for facilitation. Um, and then also from my personal side, I'm starting to look at what does this mean? You know, if there's no income for six weeks or longer, what will the impact be? Will we still be able to pay our debt? We've got a home loan. You know, what needs to happen and um, how, how can we make it go further? What, what's the reality there? Because the one thing for me is around understanding what's in the numbers. I like to be in control. And at the moment, I'm not feeling in control at all. So, um, you know, just looking at the numbers and saying, okay, let's do different scenarios. Let's look at what does it mean and then how to work with that. That gives me a sense of um, just a better understanding. And when I have a better understanding, I can make more informed decisions. Cool. Um, so let's talk about uh, the world we find ourselves in in relation to small business. Um, what are you seeing uh, talking to other small business owners? Uh, what is the overwhelming feeling that's coming across from everybody? So, I mean, a lot of people are feeling at the moment that, you know, they, they don't know where to go or they don't know how long their business will survive. So there's no revenue coming in at the moment. They haven't prepared for this or this scenario and they still have expenses to pay. And a lot of people are feeling the impact of this and especially with their employees and their teams because they support other people. And those people are supporting their families. You know, so there's a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty with not a lot of answers. And so the question is, now what? Yeah, and so let's dive into that. Um, I mean, the basics are such a key part of any business, whether it's a, a pandemic and a crisis or not. So what are the basics that you try and help people understand uh, just generally in their business uh, that prepare them for this sort of scenario and that they should be looking at right now? So for me, there's a few things that you need to look out for. And first of all, it is around using different scenarios. 
you know, there's no one answer that's going to fix all of this. And we don't know. We don't know, will lockdown end the 1st of May? Will we go back to work? Um, I think what we do know is life will never be the same and, you know, you've got a plan for it. So for me, it's working with different scenarios to say, you know, if we go for three months without revenue, what does it mean? Is it only 45 days or is it a longer period? How long will it take to survive? So you've got to understand from a revenue perspective, what is the impact for you? And from a revenue perspective, it's then to start looking at your alternatives. Is there a way to go online? you know, for your business, and you would know better than anybody else, it's not so easy just to build an online platform and start retail there, you know, so so do you understand your products? Do you know where your revenue is going to come from? What alternatives can you do? Also, in broad terms, you've got to start looking at your expenses. What options do you have from an expense perspective? You know, can you negotiate with some of your landlords or with whomever to say, is there a way to reduce the payment, delay payment, have a holiday, or whatever the case might be? You know, another unpleasant one for companies is salaries. So people want to still keep paying the employees, but can they? And for how long can they? Or is there a way to reduce it by 10% or 20% and then we work out our business for a bit longer? Because the one thing for me around um, employees, and I just want to pause there, is, you know, at the moment, people are just... Um, laying off people or um, saying, you know, there's no work, no income. But the thing is, you've built so hard in this team. You've worked for them for so long. And to replace them in six months' time is going to be equally as difficult. So, you know, how do you retain your team and work with them? Part of it is, you know, so what sort of funding can you get out there? Do you know what is available for you as a business owner? And how do you focus on that? And then most critically is the understanding that revenue is not the equivalent of cash flow. And at the, at the end of the day, it's going to be the guys with cash in the hand that can continue with their business that will be able to survive. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about cash flow in a bit more detail. Uh, I want to dig into two of the things that you mentioned Um being a, a, a business owner myself and having done this enough times, uh, this is a very difficult time for everyone, but it's important that businesses understand that the survival of your business is often as important as anything else. You can't employ anyone in the future if your business goes under. So my view on this is sometimes you have to analyze your staff and look at the ones that aren't going to work out in the long time. Some, for lack of a better phrase, some dead weight that you might have been considering moving on. Maybe now is the right time so that your business can be more lean and more prepared for the hard times ahead. I mean, how do business owners deal with staff in that regard? What are their options? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it was the CEO of Ford that said, never waste a good crisis. And that's exactly where we are in. So you've got to use this opportunity, like you say, to say, who are my star performers? How do I want to retain them? Who are some of the dead wood that, you know, is we're not going to be part of the business for the foreseeable future? And start engaging with your teams. You know, um, the big thing around this time is how do you communicate with your teams, with your employees, um, and with everybody else? Mm. But what I often find is business owners, tend to take everything on to themselves and mm. a lot of the time if you turn it to the to your employees and say what great ideas do you have what can we do differently you're at the forefront with our customers what is it that they're saying what is it that they want you know companies like f and with their innovative award where they go to their teams and they say what innovative ideas do you have and let's see if we can implement them they really reap the benefits from it and now is the time to turn to your teams and say, what can we do? Where do we need to focus? What is our product that's really um, bringing in the sales? And what do we want to do going forward? Instead of just trying to do everything by yourself, you know, there's always so many better ideas out there. And then how do you enable your teams to actually execute on that? Yeah, and there are lots of uh, options there. You mentioned earlier, potentially giving people uh, the option to work half day or work one or two days a week to kind of ret retain them for as long as you can. There is also the option of giving them some staff equity for their salary discounts and giving getting their buy-in into the business. So I don't think it is black and white. Uh, one of the people in the chat, Charles Norman, mentioned that there is context. And it's so important that every entrepreneur takes advice with a pinch of salt because none of us know what you're going through. It's very important that 
your businesses in your context? No, absolutely. And I think this is the one scenario where we really don't have answers. And we're all doing, you know, what we think is best for ourselves and for our business. And, and that's really it. You know, what is going to be best for your business? And not just in the short term, because a lot of um, business owners and entrepreneurs are just looking at it, what now? You know, it's like they're almost too scared to exhale, but you've also got to have a longer term view to say in the long run, what is this going to look like? And where do I want to take my business and what do I want to focus on? You know, so it really is around assessing your business, mm -hmm. analyzing what's going on now and having a short term view for now. So kind of how do we survive for now? But also long term, how is my business going to be sustainable in the new world of work? Yeah, and uh, actually a nice segue from that into uh, something you mentioned earlier around that shift to digital. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of smart coaches say to people, you need to get digital now. And that's actually a really dangerous statement. If you don't know anything about digital marketing, if you don't understand how to operate an e-commerce shop or how logistics work or warehousing or anything like that, shifting is going to take you years. So what do you say to people who are like, go digital, that's your solution? Look, I think you've got to really understand the various platforms that's available and how it all works and how does it integrate into your supply chain. I don't think it's just as easy as, oh, one day we're selling, you know, brick and mortar and the next day we're going online or virtual or whatever the case might be. So it's really understanding your business and is it geared for it? Can it actually accommodate that? And then also, um, you know, starting to work with experts. You know, it's one thing. I like to say stick to what you know and surround you with very clever people that know the rest. So, you know, who do you engage with? How do you go about, um, you know, finding out more information? What can work? What cannot work? And is this a, an option that you want to use long term? Because if it's not, then why are you engaging or um, spending energy on it for the short term? Yeah, so, absolutely yeah. agree. Um, any advice that you can give on that, Nick? Because, I mean, you've got a lot more experience with the online environment yeah i think um in my experience pivoting away from your core competency is a dangerous thing in a time of crisis um you shouldn't be looking to do that right now you should be looking for new and interesting ways that your core competency can be utilized in different ways um i'm kind of calling this retooling your business so if you're a business that have got developers and you were previously building something that is no longer valid until lockdown's over use those developers to do other things see if there are people in other countries who want to use your developing staff to build websites or something to make your current skill set earn you revenue in the short term and i think it is super important that we look at extremely short term medium short term and then long term and the extremely short term is when does lockdown end and i think we all need to come to the understanding that lockdown is not ending on the first of may it will end no. potentially but it's going to extend for a long period and that's the short term how do you retool for that and then do you start segueing your business into different parts that allows your existing staff to pick up what they were doing and kind of carry on but the recovery curve i'm calling it the recovery curve how long do you get back to 100 percent i think if anyone is planning for less than a year you're in dreamland and we need to start being really honest about this is that things are going to get hard and bad before they get better absolutely and exactly what you said understand your core business you can understand what are your core products what is it that you're selling and what is it that your customers are buying and wanting and then sticking to those you know and also with that is it bringing in profits for you a lot of the times what gets people into the door is not necessarily what gives you the profits in the business so do you understand your profit your your product mix and your profit mix and what is that giving you so a good time to analyze the business and your revenue streams to say what is working for us what is not working what do we can or what do we disregard going forward and what is it that we really want to focus on and punt hard and go out to our customers and say this is what we stand for yeah, I mean, that's a great um, point for us to consider in terms of the profit, the revenue, the expenses, your margins. I mean, that's the perfect position where you should bring in your finance and accounting teams and work really closely with them. I, I, as an entrepreneur, I can speak from experience that normally you kind of keep those people at arm's length because they prevent you from being quick. But now is not the time. Now is the time to embrace your accounting and finance teams, right? Absolutely. And to engage with them on quite a regular basis and working with this forecasting and scenario because they understand the numbers, you know, and 
they can really help the business to make sense of what does this mean from a number perspective. And they're also familiar with your business, they're partnering in your business. So involve them as much as possible to say, what does this look like for us going forward? Yeah, um, so I want to shift the conversation a little bit to communication. Uh, you and I have spoken about this uh, off air a little bit. Um, and I mean, I'm I, one of the, the great things I'm seeing come out of this pandemic is that leaders have all of a sudden decided to communicate openly with everyone, with their team. <laughs> and, and I think it's such a great offshoot. Um, people who used to avoid video calls with me are now jumping on those calls. Um, so <laughs> how are you approaching this idea of communication? What are the different facets of it for business owners right now? So for me, more is more at the moment. You know, people don't do well when they when there's uncertainty and then when they don't know what's going on. So more now than ever, you've got to communicate with the different stakeholders in your business. You know, you've got to engage with your suppliers to say to them. What's going on? When can you make payment? Or when is it not going to happen? Or you are that they still know you're around and share with them what are your plans? How are you going to go about um, continuing to operate as a business? What is it that you're focusing on? Engage with them around what do they want? What don't they want? How can you support them in this time? Um, we've already spoken about teams, you know, engaging with teams, understanding, you know, how can you support them? How can they support you? And just appreciate your team. You know, a lot of people are working very long hours at the moment just for the business to survive, but not often there's like a, a real thank you or a gratitude to say, we can see you sitting, putting in the hours and, and thanks for that. You know, it's tough times. Um, and then also, do you need to engage with some of your um, banks or financial institutes to say, you know, what sort of support do you have for me? How can you help my business? You know, can, is it possible to have some, I don't know, reduced payments, payment holidays. There's so many stakeholders in the business, you know, the landlords, the, you know, so you've got to consider all of this and now is the time to communicate with everybody. Yeah, and just from a, a manager to remote um, team, I think it's important that over communication can also be used as a tool for micromanaging. And if you do have staff, uh, you shouldn't be using communication as a tool to check in on people. But you have to understand that this is not a remote world we're in. This is a pandemic that has forced us to work from home. And there is a subtle difference. And as a manager, you have to understand that your your team might be sitting with their kid. They might need to feed someone. They might need to walk their dog. It is time to give a little as well as take a little absolutely and now is not the time for micromanagement i think everybody understands the seriousness of the situation and everybody is doing what they can and i mean i've been speaking to so many people sharing the challenge around just doing a full-time job as well as parenting and then schools are expecting parents to now all of a sudden do homeschooling and they're not equipped for it they're like what? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Um, so, and then, you know, and this is a very practical perspective, but we all have to eat. So, you know, and there's no takeaways. So now you still have to spend time in the kitchen, um, you know, and you can just do a five minute sandwich so many times, then you've got to start cooking. So these are real things that take time and everybody's putting in the hours and spending so many times or so much time in front of their computers but to micromanage people at this point in time. It's not going to serve your business any good. And people remember how you treated them in these difficult times. And in the future, you're going to get rewarded or not for how you, you know, how you treated people. So I always say to leaders, you, you get measured for how you show up in difficult times. And people remember what you said and did in these times. Absolutely correct. Um, so something that uh, every business should be well aware of is their runway. Um, and a lot of business owners don't really understand the concept of runway. Um, so the short version is uh, how many months or years can you maintain your expenses as they are without any income? Like, what is your runway? When do you go bankrupt? So let's talk about um, the two key things that help someone uh, ex extend their runway. And the first is drop your 
expenses, and the second is earn more money. Um, so what should small businesses right now be looking at in that regard to extend their runway or to even just start knowing what their runway is? So definitely, those are the two um, key focus areas, and and then you've got to see around revenue. So how can you generate revenue right now? What is your focus areas? What are those key products that can bring it in for you? Are there alternatives that you can use? Is there a different way of doing business? You know, so definitely understanding. You know, how do we generate revenue? And in lockdown, is it possible or not? And then working with that scenario. And if it's not, then that's the reality for now. You know. There's no revenue going to come in for the next 45 days, 60 days, then that's what you've got to deal with. You know, if you still have customers that's got outstanding um, invoices that they've got to pay, engage with them. Find out when will they be able to pay you so that you also know when that is going to happen. So revenue, quite key to the business. Then with your expenses, it's also then to understand what are my fixed and what are my variable expenses, you know. So fixed expenses are those expenses that you incur on a monthly basis. And whether the amount stays the same or not, you still have to pay it. And here we're talking about insurance. Um, they, they might or might not be some water and electricity right now or rent. You know, so you've signed a contract and there's an obligation that you've got to pay. So how are you going to deal with those fixed expenses? You know? And then with your variable expenses, you know, is there a way that you can then manage those? And for a lot of companies, there's no driving at the moment. So fuel is reduced. So what are some of your variable expenses that you can really cut now or understanding where are your expenses coming from and really working through your management accounts or your income statement and your operating expenses line by line and critically analyzing what is in there. There might be a subscription for a magazine or something, you know, that nobody's reading anymore that you can cancel. Uh, or then go online at least. Um, but how are you getting best bang for your buck right now? What is going to make more sense for your business? And sometimes it is a tough decision to say, look, we just don't need it right now. And um, other times it's an essential to say, well, we are going to need it. So how do we then engage with those suppliers to say, you know, how do we pay you over time? Absolutely. And I think there are a lot of small businesses who aren't able to operate right now who are sitting on their hands just waiting for the world to get back to work when actually what they could be doing is taking every single expense and analyzing it. I mean, at this point, everything is up for negotiation. And I was going to direct you towards the fixed expenses. Um, I mean, I know that the Fashini Group have just flat out stopped paying rent. Um, there are restaurants around the world who have just reneged on contracts. Um, what's the situation for small businesses here? I mean, I used to have five retail outlets and I've worked with enough landlords to never want to touch them again. And I didn't ever feel like I had the power to just stop paying because they'd sue me. So what are, what are we supposed to do as small businesses to help appease these hard expenses that we shouldn't be able to avoid? So I think it starts with engaging with those various um, suppliers that you have got contracts with because there is a contractual obligation and starting to explain to them that it isn't business as usual, you're not generating any revenue and to see what can you negotiate with them, you know, and it is about playing open cards and say, look, if we have to continue to pay you this month and next month in three months' time, there will not be a business. And then you will lose out on this revenue in any case. Um, and, and work with the history. You know, we've been in this space or we've been good um, paying customers for the last five years. We've got a reputation as a business. We want to continue. And how do we find a solution that will work for both parties? Because if you as a business owner stop paying them, they're going to be out of business in three months. You know, it's a very big role on effect. And um, my big concern at the moment is it's a small business owner that's at the short end of the stick and it's the individuals, the employees that is losing out on salaries. And in all of this, they, they are the people that can afford it the least. So now communication is key. I think there's a lot more space for negotiation and using these unusual circumstances to say what's going to be win-win for both parties. 
Yeah, and I think that conversation can also swing towards your suppliers and all the products and services that you offer to all your clients. Um, right now is the time that you should be analyzing your margin. What is your cost to produce whatever it is that you're producing? And can you reduce that cost and increase your sales price? Um, every little bit of your business should be analyzed right now. So, I mean, let's talk about products and what you think that small businesses could be doing in this regard to kind of eke out a little bit more money here and there. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> difficult question because <laughs> I think if people knew how to generate more revenue, they would really go about it now. I think it's to just really understand what is your ne unique value proposition. You know, what is that model that you've carved out for yourself that your customers lack of actual business? Um, and, and what I've seen a lot of companies are doing is they are going, continuing to sell um, you know, especially on the online platforms with the understanding that delivery will happen later. You know, so is there a way to generate that sort of revenue with your customers giving out vouchers? Um, some restaurants are yeah. giving out vouchers to, say, you know, pay 100 rand and get a meal for 150 rand or whatever the case might be. So, so finding different ways mm -hmm. of engaging with your customers mm -hmm. or do an online cook show, you know, are there different ways to, to just like stay at the forefront with your customers um, and, you know, with regards to increasing price, mm -hmm. I don't know how many customers at the moment would be so mm -hmm. open to that, but, um, you know, are there ways to add more value or to increase your value proposition with them? Yeah. Um, so something I'm hearing a lot from entrepreneurs uh, and business owners is the idea of funding. Uh, right now, what should they be doing? Should they be going out to seek funding? And from where? Venture capital, angel investors, banks. Should they remortgage their houses? Should they take out loans and use their credit cards? Um, and I, I swear I've had all of this. Um, and it, it makes me a bit panicked. And I, I want to get in front of that as much as possible. So what's your response to entrepreneurs who are saying things like that? Um. I think, first of all, they've got to understand their own business and they've got to do this planning to say, what's the revenue going to be? Like you say, short term, or is it going to be medium term? What's going to be long term? Then critically looking at the expenses, what can they cut? What can they renegotiate? What can be for now postponed to pay? And then understanding what's the impact on their cash flow. So once you've got a good grasp of all of this, and you understand your runway, then you can start to say, okay, do we need funding? If we need funding, where are we going to go to? And then to then start exploring the different avenues. So the South African government is giving a lot of support through the Solidarity Fund. So is that a place where you can go and apply? Is it perhaps with your own bank that you need to engage with from a business perspective and say, mm -hmm. can you support my business? How will that work? You know, venture capitalist, I think that's more um, your department of expertise. What is it that they are willing to, you know, invest in? What sort of risks are they um, willing to take? Um, and then, you know, for a last resort for me is around involving your, your personal assets to say, you know, are you willing to risk this? That, you know, is it that way, the route I want to go? Or is there other ways that I can use the assets in my business to get more funding? And I think a lot of the financial institutes are very aware that more and more businesses will come to them to say, we need funding. You know, that working capital is so important right now. And if I cannot buy products, I cannot sell to my customers and I cannot generate revenue. So there might be more leeway from a financial institute perspective to say, how do we then fund this business just, you know, for the short term or medium term or however the case might be. Also, you, now is the time to turn around every penny. You know, the South African Revenue Services are giving some leeway with regards to pay as you earn, when you have to pay that and, and, and all of that. I think the one thing people have to remember is there's no such thing as free money. You know, if you take a payment holiday, you've got to repay it at some point in time. If you go out you borrow some money, it's got to be repaid and probably with interest. So there's nothing like printing money or free money. It all comes with terms and conditions. And are you prepared to take on those terms and conditions in the longer term? Because they're not going to be now, but in six months, 12 months, they will still be there. And have you, have you thought about that 
in your budgeting scenario planning and cash flow forecast because you're still going to repay them. Yeah, absolutely. And at that point, when you are thinking about using your credit cards, your bonds, taking out loans from family and friends, you need to really seriously start considering, should this business survive? Or should mm. I put myself into debt to keep it surviving? And I'm, I'm not convinced. I think right now is the worst possible time for one very clear reason. None of us know when this is going to get better. And you and I have studied, we've built, we are deep in this. We are what some people would call experts. And I'm very comfortable to say, I have no idea when this is gonna end. So what I'm trying to help people do is plan for two very specific things, uncertainty and adaptability. Your business needs to know that everything going forward for the next six months is uncertain and it needs to be adaptable. You need to be able to shift and move as quickly as possible. And with credit card debt or a second mortgage or loans that you owe, you cannot be adaptable. Absolutely. And that has become our new norm, is uncertainty. And it's how do you respond to it? And you have to be flexible these days because we just don't know. There is nobody knows. Um, and we actually don't know how this is going to play out in South Africa and impacting businesses into the future. So the best thing for a business owner at the moment is to say this. Buka will be our in. So adjusting to change, certainty, and being more and more comfortable with it. Um, I want to I want to pick up on something that I think you and I might disagree on a little bit, and that'll that'll create a bit of an interesting conversation. Um, I believe that the government funds for small businesses are a red herring. Um, I think my view is that um, our government is fundamentally going to struggle to distribute any funds to any small businesses in time to save them. So, what's your view on that? Um, so yes, I think government is struggling. Um, I have engaged with the UIF for the TERS funding. And I mean, it's an automatic response after an automatic response after an automatic response. Um, they are learning as they go along. So I think if companies are counting on that, they're going to find a hard time to get feedback um, quickly enough for them to make decisions. So I think the intentions are good, um, whether they can deliver is it's not so clear at this moment. Um, I am hopeful for some other funds like the Solidarity Fund that's run by business partners. So they are more familiar with how to disperse funds. Um, and I've listened to an interview that Bruce Whitfield did with one of the partners there and how they are engaging with this. And their idea is really to get to these business owners ASAP. They understand the working capital is needed in the businesses, that they need money right now for the business to survive. And that's really the intention. So um, as an eternal optimist, I want to believe that this can happen, that the urgency is there for small businesses and where possible um, government in conjunction and in partnership with the private sector will get to them, not everybody. Um, I think it's unrealistic to think that everybody is going to survive this. Um, but to the companies that's got a proven track record, that know what they're doing, definitely there's funding available, but not enough for everybody. And they've already said, the Solidarity Fund has already said, they are completely oversubscribed with requests. So I think, um, you know, some people will win, some will not. And it's how do you use what is available um, to you right now? Yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll finish off on the government thing. I think my view is that you should apply and hope for the best, but expect that nothing is coming your way and try and fix your own business because no one is going to help you. Absolutely. And my biggest concern are to the individuals or the, you know, the contract workers that work for themselves, the sole proprietors, because nobody is talking about them. You know, there's funding for SMEs, there's certain groups like the spaza owners that's getting assistance. Nobody's talking about the sole proprietor working for themselves, um, and that's a large part of our economy, you know. And if yeah. these people are not around, you know, it's a rippling effect because they're taking care of their own families and um, providing income, and they are very directly with this. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so something that is a very big issue um, that small businesses are trying to grapple with, but they feel small, is outstanding invoices. What are the tactics that business owners can use to try and get back some of the money that's been owed to them mm -hmm. for months? And now a lot of uh, client suppliers are using COVID as a reason not to pay. So what, what are the options? So really at the moment, very little bar communicating and getting hold of your customer and explaining the situation to them. You know, and we're seeing large corporations like Edcon that just said to the supplier, sorry, we can't pay. Now that's a huge retailer, um, you know, and you can only imagine how big the um, supplier group is and, and the impact of that. You know, so if large companies are not even able to pay their suppliers, the man in the street, the small business owner are definitely feeling it. And what you need to do now is just engage with your um, customers, explain the position to them, see how you can negotiate some payment terms. You know, one in the hand is worth two in the bush at the moment. So even if they make a little payment, I'd rather accept that little bit of payment. And, you know, we keep on communicating, we keep on um, engaging with each other just to say, what can you pay? When can you pay? Because that all impacts your own decision making. And again, that goes all the way back to what we spoke about in the beginning, open communication. You have yeah. to be communicating to everyone in your immediate universe and galaxy as a small business, starting with the people you owe money to and the people that owe money to you. Um, and you have to be open and upfront with it and try and put payment plans in place rather, like you said earlier, have some businesses survive than have everyone go bankrupt. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and that's so important is just, you know, to, for, as a business owner, to appreciate every decision you make impacts another business, impacts on another employee, impacts on, you know, other uh, families. So, so there's a whole rippling effect here. And we are not in it alone, but you've got to do the right thing for the next person to do the right thing. So uh, one of my favorite statements, and someone in the chat mentioned it earlier, measure what matters. Um, a lot of small businesses get lost in what, what is called vanity metrics, how many likes you have, how many shares you have, how many followers you have. So why don't you talk about just a couple of the, the measurements that matter right now and probably for the next few months for small businesses? Okay. So, um, it's, uh, sorry, I laugh because I only um, smile when I get money in the bank. I am um, as a, you know, when a contract is signed, I'm happy, but um, I celebrate when I get money in the bank. So, so for me, that's that's key. What what do you have in the bank right now? So, what monies hmm. are coming in? Um, you also want to be focused on sales because that's your pipeline. You know, and if you sell cash, great, because then you know you immediately get it in. Um, if you sell on credit understand when your customers are going to pay, and then you've got to engage with them to make sure you're top of mind when they do pay. Um, when I was still in the banking industry, we, we used to say, whoever screams the loudest get paid first. You know, So you've got to be screaming and knocking on their door to make sure you get that in. So, so that for me, sales and then cash in is quite critical. Um, and then what are your expenses and how are you managing that? Um, so for me, it just goes back to your whole income statement. Do you understand your revenue? What are your expenses? How does that translate to profit? And then most importantly, what money is coming in the bank and what's going out? And do you have a good grasp of that? Cool. That makes sense. Um, so there was a question uh, from Paul just in terms of expanding on the road forward and the current standards for cash flow versus the future of cash flow. Um, and then secondly, uh, do we think that the credit versus cash trading will change in the future? Sorry, do you want to repeat that question, please? Sure, we'll start with the first part. Um, the road forward in terms of the current cash flow standards versus the future cash flow standards. Like, I mean, a lot of businesses are very hand to mouth and cash on hand is just a non-existent thing. You and I discussed this briefly. What should businesses be doing to prepare for something like this in the future? Honestly, I hope we never have to prepare for something like this again. <laughs> but um, having said that, businesses have to look at the future and, you know, how do they generate cash and start to build reserves? 
um, we are going to need more and more of that as we go forward. I think a big challenge that companies faced in South Africa was ESCOM and load shedding. A lot of companies spend a lot of their reserves and cash flow just kind of either um, you know, investing in inverters or generators so that they can carry on as a business when they have load shedding, or they just weren't able to generate revenue um, you know, so in getting and building up reserves. So I think there's not a lot of cash around at the moment. Um, for the future, it's really being prudent and just putting away as much money as possible as you can, um, paying off debt as quickly as you can so that your interest um, is reducing. And I think that's the one big plus that we are experiencing right now. You know, we had a 2% decrease in interest. And what does that mean for you as a business? Can you pay off your debt quicker? Because that's a way of saving. Um, and then cutting expenses as far as possible. You know, from a, but, but for me, debt, debt is a killer when it comes to cash and, and how, do you, how do you manage that? And then really looking at each of your expenses to say, what do we have to pay right now? And I think a lot of businesses also need to understand the difference between some of the expenses are not cash flow, like your depreciation. You know, depreciation of assets, your cash flowed out of the bank the moment you bought that asset. So, yes, on your income statement, you still see that expense, but it's not a cash flow. So there are some items that, um, that business owners or, you know, people in business just don't understand is not cash flow. So have mm -hmm. very clear understanding around what is cash flow, what is not, and where does your money go towards. Cool. So we only have a few minutes left, um, and I want to focus on the humans behind the businesses for the last few minutes. Uh, it's something that you and I have discussed. We're both very passionate about. Um, I think that as South African entrepreneurs, we ignore mental health at the risk of our physical and personal health. Uh, I'm very big on being open about seeing a psychologist. I call him my mental coach who helps me through the difficult times in my business. Um, so what are some of your tips that entrepreneurs can be doing while they're in lockdown to be open? okay not being okay <laughs> so i don't know if we'll ever be okay with not being okay um but yes i'm also very passionate about you know taking care of you as a holistic person so um, besides the financial aspect i also coach people around leadership and for me it's around you know having a good understanding of who you are um and being okay with who you are so you've got to know yourself and be able to lead yourself before you can lead others. And therefore, it's so important in these times to, from a mental perspective, is to, to have office hours, to say, you know, it's, a, it's an eight to six scenario, which is 12 hours, whatever the case might be. Um, we cannot concentrate for longer than 45 minutes to an hour. So take regular breaks. You know, be kind to yourself and say, Today is not a good day to engage with customers. I am just going to focus on more reporting or analytics or whatever the case might be. Um, exercise is so important, and especially in these times. You know, some people are staying in small apartments. Um, others have got the luxury of a garden. But you've got to exercise. Whether you just do jumping jacks up and down in your little space. Um, there's so many videos on YouTube. But exercise is critical. So you've got to... You've got to feed the mind and the body. And, and literally, you've got to eat healthy. You've got to see what foods are available to you now that you have easy access to and in eating the right stuff. So so we, so we um, there's a lot of jokes around, you know, put a face mask on so that you don't raid your fridge. But um, it's it's important to, to stay away from the sugars and to have more fruit and veggies and, and eat healthy. So it's... It's a, it's a holistic approach, um, and I'd love to hear your view on this, Nick. Yeah, um, so I've, I've developed this theory uh, from my 20s into my 30s that uh, it's the, the most ironic thing that business owners and entrepreneurs for a long time believe that putting themselves at the bottom of their priority list made them okay because everyone else, their business, their staff, their partners, were it was ahead of them. And that's a fundamentally flawed way of looking at the world. If you put yourself at the top of your priority list, that's what I call self-care. It's not selfish. And just four simple things that you should be doing. Sleep well, eat well, mental fitness and physical fitness. That's it. If you get eight hours of sleep, you will fundamentally be a better person to work with and be around and you'll attract better people into your space. If you're sleeping two hours, you're working 20 hours, you're eating junk and let's be clear, you have to make home cooked meals. You have to use good ingredients. Those things matter. And the research is in the corner of these things. You 
can't be a 21 year old young gun and think you can work till three in the morning, wake up at six and do more work. The human body does not work that way. That's how robots function. So I fully agree with you. Self care is not selfish and we need to focus on that. So Sulet, as we close out, uh, what are your parting words to business owners and entrepreneurs in this pandemic? Um, so for me, the big thing is we are in uncertain times and I'd rather understand what is out there and what's happening. So for me, what's the stories in the number? Do you understand what is happening in your business from a financial perspective? Are you able to read that story, make sense of it, and then use it to make plans? Because the more plans you have right now, the better geared you are for the future. Amazing. My parting words are, as an experienced entrepreneur, we're all in this. We're all deep in concern. We're all panicked. We're all stressed. None of us know what's happening. So when you feel like you're the only one out there, just lift your head up, phone an entrepreneur you know, and ask them how they're doing. I promise you now they're going to be as stressed as you. And there is definitely shared sense of relief in that shared uh, experience that we're all going through. So this will be rebroadcast. Um, we will email everyone the links. Please come back for our next one. Um, Sulet, thank you for your time. And to everyone who joined, thank you so much. And we hope that you stay safe and your businesses stay afloat. Nick, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Cheers.